This morning we are concentrating on the music of Baroque composer Georg Bohm. Uh, Bohm uh, hails from uh, the part of the world we now think of as Germany. He was born in 1661. Uh, received his first music lessons from his father, who was an organist and schoolmaster. Um, among other things, Bohm is believed to have been one of J.S. Bach's early teachers. Um, we know that Bach and Bohm did personally know each other. In fact, uh, in 1772, Bohm was, uh, was made Bach's uh, personal uh, literary agent, so to speak, or maybe musical agent is a better term. Uh, Bohm was actually responsible for disseminating and selling Bach's music. Uh, like many musicians, he had to have another uh, side gig, as, by the way, did uh, J.S. Bach, who was a, a Latin teacher and, uh, of course, taught lessons. Um, uh, Bohm, um, well, as you probably know by now, I've, I've kind of made a career out of, out of uh, sharing the music of lesser-known composers. Uh, uh, Georg Bohm is uh, far from a household word. But in my humble opinion, uh, he probably should be. Uh, he is one of the major proponents of something hugely important uh, in music, and particularly church music. That's the uh, uh, choral uh, partito or choral variations. You're probably aware there's lots and lots of organ music that's written uh, based on chorales. And uh, it really was in this kind of high baroque period that that, uh, that kind of composition came to its height uh, with composers like Baum. Uh, Baum is mostly known for his keyboard works, uh, harpsichord and organ. Uh, interestingly, uh, some of his pieces um, are interchangeable, so to speak. They can be played either on harpsichord or organ uh, without any real adjustment or any real difficulties. He was a practical musician and he wanted his pieces to be played widely, so he wrote them in such a way that the musicians could play them uh, based on pretty much whatever they had on hand. Um, additionally, the music of Bohm is, it sits right at the heart of a, a style of writing we refer to as uh, uh, Stilus Fantasticus, uh, writing that's essentially based on an improvisational style. So a lot of his music is very free-flowing, um, uh, can almost sound like improvisations, I think, if you do it correctly. Um, and uh, so, so it shares a commonality with, uh, with uh, Buxtehude and, of course, with Bach. Um, first couple of pieces I'd like to play, I'll play on the harpsichord. Um, in case you don't know, harpsichord is, uh, some people will call it the, uh, the father of the piano, but it's maybe more like the uh, grandfather or grand-uncle of the piano. Uh, they, other than having keyboards, they don't actually have that much in common. A harpsichord is a kind of guitar playing machine, if you will. Uh, if, you, if you imagine a guitar or a lute, now if you can imagine uh, a contrivance to pluck the strings for you instead of, uh, in, instead of having to do it yourself. That's essentially what a harpsichord does. Um, one of the interesting things about harpsichord is that it's kind of like organ in that no matter how hard you wolf down the keys, you will not succeed in making the notes any louder. If you want it to be louder, you have to add more strings, commonly by writing parts with, 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 more, with more notes in them. Um, uh, otherwise, the only other expressive device you really have is phrasing and, and articulation. Um, with that thought, um, I'll start, with, I'll start with the harpsichord music, um, just a few pieces, and uh, we'll move over to the organ, if you're still here at that point. And uh, uh, hopefully you will uh, you'll find this enjoyable, and I'll take questions afterwards.